is 50 years ago we should have built proper linked up public transport systems and we didn't. Short term pain for long term gain. Twice a day Auckland's traffic slows to a crawl. By the 1950s, more people were travelling by tram than at any time using all forms of public transport up to two years ago. So, how do we get here? And is there a way to fix it? In the early 1900s, Auckland was a relatively compact city. Without cars, people had to live within a short walk or tram ride to their workplace, shops and other public services. However, as the price of cars plummeted over the 1900s, the middle class started turning to them as a more convenient form of transport. People no longer needed to live within close proximity to important amenities. The introduction of the car drove the fastest period of land area growth that Auckland has ever seen. Yeah, I mean, people literally moved away from public transportation, meaning they moved farther away from the center of the city. As we had more vehicles available, we built roads that stretched out beyond the traditional lines of our cities. You can imagine a tram stopping in front of an apartment building, capturing five or six riders at that location. It's not as feasible to go down a suburban road and pick up one person every few kilometers. Auckland's tram lines at the time were not publicly owned, and as ridership fell, they became unprofitable and were taken to the scrapyard. This change was then enshrined in our city as motor vehicle advocates transformed our urban design to ensure that the road had become synonymous with the car. The first bike lanes in New Zealand were advocated by the Automobile Association because they wanted to push bikes off to the side of the road to make it more efficient for cars. Uh, they were afraid drivers wouldn't drive if they had to fear uh, hitting a cyclist. So it's kind of pushing the cyclists out of the way and taking over the road. This 50-year transformation of Auckland is now an integral part of our daily lives as we have completely embraced the car. So in New Zealand, there are nine cars uh, for every 10 people. We also have the third highest public transport fare in the world. So there's a lot of challenges to moving people out of the car and into public transportation and bikes, etc. This situation sounds pretty bleak. But there is reason to have optimism, and Timothy Welch believes there are real, impactful solutions that Auckland could put into place right now. Three simple things that could be done really within a year uh, and completely change the landscape of driving and, and roads in the city. To implement a congestion charge. So unfortunately for drivers who don't want to pay more, they really need to pay more. There is resistance to this idea in New Zealand, with Auckland Mayor Wayne Brown calling it a distraction until we have proper public transport. This is an almost identical criticism to those who opposed the London congestion charge 20 years ago. But as of 2017, it had raised over £1.7 billion for public transport infrastructure. We should pump more money into modes of public transportation. Even just more buses and, and more priority lanes for buses can be a very quick game changer for public transportation. And then building more protected infrastructure for cyclists. If you want mothers and fathers and kids out there cycling and out of cars, we have to create a safe space for them. It is easy to look at Auckland's transport crisis as an inscrutable problem that will take decades to solve. But if we're willing to make some genuine changes and some hard choices, we'd be able to have a real impact. Take Amsterdam, now seen as a mecca for cyclists and a world-class example of modern urban design. But the Amsterdam of today was not always a given. In the 1970s, Amsterdam was crammed full of cars and could have followed the path of many other modern cities towards car-focused infrastructure. But instead, through a combination of public demonstrations and forward-thinking city leadership, they chose a different future. And this work continues to this day. In Amsterdam's 2018 local election, the local Green Party gained widespread support on the promise of removing 10,000 more car parks from the city. Auckland's car infrastructure of today is much more entrenched than Amsterdam in the 1960s. And it's not going to be easy to reduce our reliance on cars. But what Amsterdam does prove is that it isn't just luck that makes cities more accessible, more livable and lower carbon. And we don't have to be stuck with decisions made 50 years ago about how we should get around our city today.